Hi, I'm Dr. Mimi Guarneri, and I am the medical director at Pacific Pearl La Jolla Guarneri Integrative Health. And I am here today with Dr. Dan Vicario, uh, who I am thrilled has joined Pacific Pearl La Jolla as our guru, if you might, in integrative oncology. Uh, you know, for cardiology, I have really uh, work to bring a true integrative model right. uh, to my patients. And so even though I might be recommending a stent or a bypass, if that's what they need, I'm also looking at the entire person, holistic right. model. And I believe, Dr. Vicario, you're doing the same with cancer patients. Th that, that's correct. Uh, and first of all, thank you very much. It, for me, it's an honor and a privilege to we be par part of this family. Thank you. It's a wonderful family here. And we are kindred souls and kindred spirits in what we do. I mean, you've been doing incredible work for decades for the cardiology you. patients. You started when you were eight. So, <laughs> um, and and I, it's just that passion we have to help the people. And you've seen it in cardiology, and I've had the honor to work with so many cancer patients. Uh, and there's so much we can do for them. And just that's why it's so nice to be in a collaborate collaborative center where we can all work together and support the cancer patients who are really going through challenging, very challenging uh, condition, but there's so much hope and optimism that we can give to them. Especially today where we have new treatment yes. options. And you know, one of the things that um, I truly believe is nature cures. Yes. But very frequently our bodies are not put in the best state for healing. It's, exactly. It's like if I cut my hand, I it, don't have to tell my body how right. to heal it. It, Absolutely. it knows how to do it. And I'm not saying people shouldn't do their chemo or their radiation. That's appropriate. But how do we put the body in the best place to to receive these treatments? Absolutely. Right? Yes. You know, I'm, I'm very intrigued because you have very conventional training, right? right. Like I did yes. chief resident at UC yes. Irvine, right. pharmacology yes. at Stanford. I yes. mean, this is a very conventional, hardcore background. How did you come to this concept of integrative, holistic? Right. Yeah. So very similar to you and so many others that are interested in integrated oncology. We always b believe that there was much more to healing than just supporting a person that is going through a physical ailment and just supporting the medical aspect. There's so much more to that. So I've always had that interest all through medical school, residency, uh, fellowship, then junior faculty. I've always did my best to study and experience different healing traditions. I've had that, that opportunity, which was hard to do because in the midst of our busy, busy um, medical life as an oncologist and reading all the literature in cancer, uh, taking that time to really focus on other modality and see not only how it helped me, but how it helped people with serious illnesses, including advanced cancers, when they were going through these different modalities that we can mention a few, they had mir miraculous responses. Um, right, and, and I know for many, many years you uh, had a private center right. where you made everything from acupuncture to healing right. touch to uh, nutrients and nutrition and uh, just all sorts of wonderful things that right. you have done throughout the course of your career right. while people were getting their mainline, uh, for lack of a better description, uh, conventional yes. uh, chemotherapy, radiation, and so on. Uh, so I'm wondering if uh, you would talk a little bit about um, your role here at Pacific Pearl, right. uh, you, because I consider you one of our, our visiting professors yes. and faculty yes. that's here when our patients need them. Uh, and if someone does have a cancer uh, diagnosis and they came to see you, how would that look? What might you... Uh, what would that appointment look like? And then how would you work with their um, cancer, their, their outside or conventional cancer Absolutely. specialists? Absolutely. So first, if okay with you, I just, we, we like to define things. So sure. definition of integrative oncology, it really is, um, you know, looking at a definition of integrative medicine, mm -hmm. like at the Academy of Integrative Health, it has a beautiful definition, and it's applying that to cancer, just in your case would be applying that in cardiology. But we can expand it saying that it really is, integrating oncology is bringing together the best that medicine and science has to offer with 
a really a whole universe of well-established, evidence-based, integrative, complementary healing modalities, discipline, traditions, and techniques um, where the patient, the cancer patient, is the center of attention. And very importantly, it is collaborative, it is working with all those specialists. So in this case would be doctors, naturopathic doctors, osteopathic doctors, um, and we have um, basically all types, doctors and nurses, traditional physicians, nurses, and well, qual highly qualified practitioners of all the healing arts that are working together, synergizing and complementing each other and collaborating to have the patient as the center of the focus, but also their family, their loved ones, and the caregivers, and mostly in an optimal healing environment like you've all created here. So um, when we go, when I get to see someone uh, as an integrative oncologist, we have at least an hour and a half, sometimes two, to go over their medical oncology condition, answer questions from an integrative oncologist perspective, support their understanding of what their traditional oncologist is doing, if it's their medical oncologist, surgical oncologist, or radiation oncologist, and um, really focusing on, first of all, answering all their questions, but also then going over a menu of complementary modalities that they could consider. And there's all, close to 20 different modalities, and we can briefly mention them. Um, and then uh, it really is for them to, to leave with a sense of peace of mind. So I always tell them, if there's something I say you don't like, you're welcome to slap me. Because, mm -hmm. because our goal is to make someone, especially with cancer, who's been told about their horrible prognosis and given statistics, to help them understand that that is just what the medical system has to say. Uh, doctors are sued for being too optimistic, and if they don't tell people, what patient, what could happen, then the oncologists are fearful of um, not telling them that everything that potentially could happen. But we focus on all the good things that could happen. Um, and I just want to briefly mention of these, the menu of options, and that's where it's so important for us to work with these highly trained practitioners that have experience in nutrition and uh, emotional support. There's a whole psychosocial oncology society. Energy, exercise and movement. Yoga, not only the, the postures, but yoga as a whole philosophy. Uh, yoga instructors, it really is a whole way of being. Physical therapy when needed. Focusing on symptom management, pain, and all the other symptoms that if their traditional oncologist is not focusing, that we can do that part as well. Uh, looking at natural supplements, you just had a conference. Natural supplements in oncology is, could take days to talk about all the, the evidence-based natural therapies. Uh, we have em empowerment techniques, mind-body medicine like um, meditation, visualization, uh, mindfulness, um, and ma oncology massage. There's a special certification for oncology massage therapists. Traditional Chinese medicine, Ayurveda, uh, acupuncture, the biofield therapies, uh, aromatherapy, art therapy, music therapy, pet therapy, journaling, uh, biofeedback, spirituality, and cancer. So those are all the topics that are so important. And you asked me about how to work with my colleagues. I really love to work with my oncology, traditional oncology, non-integrative colleagues, because I tell them, we can be, as integrative oncologists, we are first at service for the patients, but also it will help you because we can answer all the questions on natural therapies. Yeah. The traditional oncologists are so hardworking. They have so much to read every day in the science of advances in, in oncology. They don't have time to, to read. Sometimes they don't have the interest, but most of the time they don't have the time or the resources to answer the questions on integrative oncology. So we. As integrated oncologists, we're at service to the oncologists as well, educating them, educating students, giving through workshops and courses, students, uh, residents, fellows, and helping them understand there's, there's so much, there's robust integrative oncology research uh, and hundreds and hundreds of articles in well-established 
um, journals like the Journal of Clinical Oncology. And I can mention, if you want, maybe at least one study or so. But yeah, I, I think that it's important for people to recognize now we actually have a Society of Integrative right. Oncology, which is an international society. Absolutely, I'm correct, right? yes. All of, of board certified oncologists coming together saying we need to do things differently. We have board certification right. uh, in integrative holistic medicine, in integrative medicine. So we have moved from a, oh, I took a weekend course and maybe right. I know a little something Absolutely. to really uh, like specialists that we have here at the Pearl with board certifications and uh, you know naturopathic doctors doing working within their board certification, osteopathic medicine within their board certification, integrative oncology, integrative on uh, cardiology. I mean, I think we've we've moved to a whole new level where we feel like we can best support our patients with, uh, as you said, evidence right. based. And, Absolutely. Uh, and I think that that's critically, critically uh, important. Uh, so it would be good in the few minutes we have remaining uh, for maybe you to talk about. Uh, your latest favorite research study, right. uh, and uh, let let people hear about it. Yes, so thank you for bringing up about the Society of Integrative Oncology. Mm -hmm. So I do tell my colleagues to look, and, and the patients, of course, to look at the website of the Society of Integrative Oncology. Mm -hmm. There are books and research. There are thousands of articles that look at the benefits of all these different modalities. And there are also very well-established integrative oncology programs at the University of California, Los Angeles, San Francisco, right. the Dana-Farber in Boston, Memorial Sloan Kettering, New York, MD Anderson in Houston. So it, this is, it, it really is mainstream now. It's medicine. Um, it's, 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 medicine. it's medicine. Exactly. So a lot of the studies um, that were done and that are published, for example, in the Journal of Clinical Oncology are outpatient studies looking at all the disciplines that we mentioned and, and the studies and how beneficial they can be. Now, there was a very interesting um, study published in the Journal of the National Cancer Institute, uh, and it was called Effects of Integrative Medicine on Pain and Anxiety in Oncology in Patients. Mm. And what they did, they looked, it was a retrospective analysis of 1,800 inpatient oncology uh, in the oncology ward that were having pain and anxiety. And they looked at uh, three categories of complementary modalities. Body work, which was massage and craniosacral. They looked at energy healing uh, and, um, the, yeah, energy healing and meditation visualization, and also traditional Chinese medicine. Mm -hmm. And what they saw, the results were impressive, that the, uh, amongst the patients, there was a 47% reduction of pain and 56% reduction in anxiety. I mean, that is huge, looking at using these, what we say are simple, low-cost modalities that can help the patients with a 50% reduction. And in that, their, that's huge. Huge, 1,800 patients. And, and what people may not realize, but we know as physicians, when someone has anxiety, their pain is much worse. Absolutely. This has been proven. Yes. And the more pain medicine we take, the longer we end up staying in the hospital because people become constipated, have side effects from pain medicine, and so on. So right. less anxiety, less pain, sometimes also translates into less medication Absolutely. To, for, for anxiety and so on. So I think that uh, there's huge benefit, and we've seen the same thing in cardiology, right. that if someone is going for a scary procedure, say a bypass or a valve replacement, that healing touch and guided imagery right. really decreases anxiety significantly. Uh, we have research that shows us in the colorectal cancer arena, yes. uh, people going to surgery who listen to guided imagery tapes yes. go home from the hospital almost two days earlier. So. There is uh, so much to this, particularly in the realm of uh, body-mind medicine, uh, nutrition, biofield therapy, spirituality, uh, and so on, that I think is not being utilized as much as it could be. Absolutely. And what, what, what really is exciting is that our colleagues, our traditional colleagues, are really opening up. 
mostly their patients are having them open yes. up. But, but, but when we talk to them, I mean, I really enjoyed giving a presentation at the Cancer Center here in UC San Diego um, and other cancer centers, talking to, these are colleagues who only believe in medicine. But when we show them the information and the data, right. they open up and they say, you know, the reason I've been so resistant is because I've seen people hurt by some natural therapy. And I, my answer is, well, we all see pa patients hurt by a lot of doctors <laughs> and a lot of surgeons. Yes. So that's not an excuse to say, I'm not going to accept this. So when they understand that not only there's science behind it and there's evidence base, but it really is practitioner dependent, as there are really bad doctors. Um, there are outstanding physicians, there are outstanding surgeons, and there are out outstanding integrated practitioners who save people's lives. And so work that's with why, the medical community. That's work why we want to work like, with them. Yes, and that's why they're here at Pacific Pearl. Right. And it's a team approach, right? right. Yes. Uh, because when you rattled off all those names, Memorial Sloan Kettering, you may not know, I spent three years there doing right. my internship and residency I, when I, I was at Cornell. That, yeah. and, uh, Dana Farber, and I mean, these are major medical institutions, and they're embracing right. and recognizing we need to uh, have integrative oncology. Absolutely. And I think a big piece of that is the consumer, and that's the cancer patient in this situation saying, hey, I, I, I'm okay with my chemo, my radiation, but I want to put my body in the best state for right. healing and all the work that my dear friend Mitch Gaynor has done and the books that he has written on um, how to care for people with cancer and how to truly uh, bring these worlds together. Again, it's powerful medicine. Right. So we're, we're thrilled that you're here with us Great. at we, Pacific Pearl. I, I love it. And collaborating, I mean, I've had... And just like you, working with our colleagues, I really enjoy working with the oncologist, and they're embracing all this yes. because it saves them time. It know, they know that it helps the patients, and it's something that they don't have the experience with. So for me, it's, again, it's, it's a pleasure to be with the, you and the f family at Pacific Pearl and the Integrative Health Center here. Right. Thank, Thank you, you, Dr. Vicario, yeah. and uh, we know uh, you're already seeing uh, patients here. Right. We know you'll be seeing many more patients here, and we really appreciate having the integrative oncology expertise. So thank you. I love being of service, yes. Thank you.